Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna install the flue pipe on my garage heater. So, I have the outer section of the wall thimble in place, and I have a high temperature silicone boot out there. I may need to trim that boot a little bit because the category three vent, let me see if I can show you this. This is the chimney cap here. These have silicone gaskets in it, so they're nice and tight. This part right here needs to go through that boot and I think I cut the boot pretty tight to the four inch dimension of the pipe itself. So I'll probably have to do that. But the first thing I need to do is install the thimble itself. So this flange up here will attach to the girt. This will be like straight through from this thimble to that thimble. And then, like I said, I'll have, oh, I don't know if I did say that or not. I'm gonna have to cut a strip of this B vent and wrap that around the gap that'll be in here. It's not like a, a flue gas thing, it's just for heat. So it doesn't have to be like airtight or anything. It just needs to be there. So I need to get this installed, put that strip around it, and then I can start worrying about the pipe. We'll get this one installed. We'll get one of these through there, and then we'll use this adjustable piece right here to get the length right. I'm not sure how much this is adjustable. I think it's between, well, we'll see what it says right here. Um, 19 inches of adjustable length. All right, we'll take a look at this when we get to it. But I have another section of pipe over there if needed. This is basically what we need to achieve. The furnace itself is mounted lower than the thimble by enough for the correct pitch. So this is pretty exaggerated, but it needs to be pitched back to the furnace and then any condensate will drain out of that. And that's gonna be a whole nother thing. We need to have a loop in that with water or somehow have it so that it doesn't let flue gases escape into the building. But we're not gonna be doing that today. Um, I don't think there's anything else on here. All of these parts are category three, which means they're stainless steel and the grade of stainless steel does not allow the flue gases to attack it. They have like a triple gasket. That's a high temperature silicone gasket. So when the parts go together, it's got like this bulbous end that pushes against this gasket and it seals it up real nice and tight. But once we get everything in there, I'm gonna seal it around the edge again with high temperature silicone. So to get started, we'll get this thimble in place and get that wrapped in back. And then we're gonna worry about that boot out there getting a pipe through the boot. So let's get going with this. All right, let me show you this thimble detail really quick. Because we're gonna have a metal wall attached to the girt here at some point, I can't use screws with big heads on them because they'll get in the way of the wall at some point. So this is gonna be nailed in place. I'll drill some holes in there and we'll use roofing nails, nice and flat. And you could see the gap there because this is a really thick wall that's where that strip of the B vent is going to go it's just going to be wrapped around it riveted in place and call it a day all right let's get this installed and get it wrapped 
and then we'll worry about the thimble out there which I do believe like I said is gonna be a little bit tight so I'll have to go out there on a ladder and trim that just a little bit All right, let me show you what I did here. First thing I did was wrap this girt with aluminum tape. It really doesn't need it, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. I got my center line on this and I transferred the center line from back there out onto the stud here and then down. And I'll get this level, nail it in place and then we'll work on that gap. It is insanely cold working with this metal. A lot of this stuff, I just can't use gloves. Beautiful. All right, let's see what our gap is. It's about an inch and a quarter for the patch. I think I'm gonna go with probably about four inches. Okay, I have my four inch wide piece of metal cut from my old B vent there. This should be plenty long enough. What I'm going to do is put some tape on the end and just tape it over the gap up there and then pull it real nice and tight all the way around and then tape all the way around. Then I'll use some stainless steel rivets to keep it there permanently. I got the stainless steel rivets right here. Unfortunately, my rivet gun jammed up when I was doing the wall thimble there. Here it is right here. I have a rivet stuck in there and it's basically doing it on every one with these stainless steel rivets. So I think if I take this over to the vise and clamp that shaft in the vise and yank that out with the vise grips, I should be able to get it out of there. I hope I don't have to do that with every rivet. I'll probably put four rivets in this. All right, let's go get this taped in place. First, I'm gonna take some denatured alcohol and clean this off. Metal always has a little bit of oil on it, or it generally does, and I don't want that to get in the way of the tape sticking to this. So clean that off real quick and go get this taped in place. All right, I have my splice in place. This is it about right there and I've taped it up real good. It would probably hold forever with just the tape, but I don't want to take the chance. So I'm going to get a drill, drill a couple holes in here, get three or four rivets in there, and then the thimble will be done. All right, the light isn't the best here, but I fixed the rivet gun and I have four rivets in place. The reason I'm using rivets is because they're real small on the other side and if I were to use like one inch screws like these, they would end up hitting the flue pipe on the inside and I don't want that. All right, now I'm going to go shove a piece of pipe in from the outside and we'll get it hooked up to the heater. Great, got a little bit of drippage going. I 
There we go. I need to check the distance, but I believe it is 12 inches from the building minimum, but you don't want it to be releasing gas up into the soffit either. Not that it's going to make much of a difference in this situation. All right, let me go check on the minimum. It doesn't look like I'm going to need a clamp on this. Looks like it has a real nice fit. Maybe I'll just put a bead of silicone on that. We'll see. Let's go back on the inside and check the minimum distance. I'm getting all wet. The minimum distance that this is supposed to protrude from the building. And we'll mark it on the inside where that is. Well, we'll get it to the right distance out here and then mark it on the inside. All right, well, what I was gonna do is get this piece fitted on and then whatever the distance this one and the one that's through there came to, I was just gonna call that a day, but I was looking at this and the gasket's gone on this. There's no gasket. And it looks like somebody was digging at that. I'm sure this was a return and I'm going to return that as well. This is an adjustable piece, so let's just see how these look on there. I know I have at least a foot out there already, so I'm good to go, and more is not going to hurt at all. So this one will go in here. that all right that's gonna work I'll get this one installed permanently it takes a little bit of finagling to get that one on there then well let me see how much I got out there because this one is adjustable so I can get this outside one to whatever I want that's what I'll do. All right. I kind of like it right where it is. It's just a little bit past the eave right there. Let's get a dimension on the eave. Okay, I would say 14 inches. And that's exactly, oh, 15 inches. I'm gonna call that good. Brings us a little bit past the eave. We will get dripping on it, but I put this on sideways like that. And it should be just fine. Okay. 
All right. I think that's going to be it right there. Let's take a look at it. It'll be tipped up just a bit. Yeah, that's plenty far out. All right, it is the next day when I got all this stuff set up. I was ready to put that adjustable piece in there and I went to adjust it and it was jammed solid. Nothing was going to move that thing. I hooked it up in the vise and tried yanking on it. I tried a vise grips and tapping it and I tried everything. I tried lubing it up, trying to pull it apart and nothing was gonna get that thing apart. So I had to run to town. Oh, and also it was missing this dielectric grease, which is silicone grease. You use that when you put this thing together, you lube up the, the silicone gasket here. But anyways, it was not adjusting. Let me show you how this adjusts. All right, this is how this works. You put this piece on the side towards the furnace and then you slide this piece into it. I'll show you how that works in just a second. But you slide it in until you have enough room to get this onto the piece on this side. Then you slide this out over the piece on this side. Then you do all the attachments and stuff. And you can see that this has double gaskets on it. This side only has a single gasket. Well, I have to keep these apart anyways. What you do is install this first and then you lube up the gaskets with your grease, then slide this in. So, well, let's just go get that done. Okay. The first section to go in place is the drain, and that does not have a gasket on the end, so I'm going to be using high temperature silicone sealant. I'm going to put some on the part itself and some on here. We'll get that on there nice and tight. It goes all the way back into here. Get that on there nice and tight, tighten it down with the hose clamp, then we'll get that adjustable section in place. Okay, I have this one on. I'm going to leave these tabs until later. I'll bend them over when everything's done. All right, now I need to get the silicone grease on both of these gaskets and this gasket right here. Then I'll slide this into here, tip it up, slide it back onto here. I'll try to get video of that. It's pretty shaky up here. Uh, maybe I'll just put it on my head. But it makes like an audible thunk when it goes into place. So you'll know when it's set. All right, let's get these greased up and we'll get our adjustable piece in place. Make sure I have enough for the two gaskets on the adjuster part.
Okay, we have the entire inside part done. I don't know if this showed on the camera or not, but when I was working with the adjustable joint there, it slipped off of the furnace, the whole pipe did, and that whole unit from the furnace to the pipe that goes out through the wall, that whole thing slipped, bounced off of here, and fell onto the floor. Luckily, it just put a little dent in the end over here, and I took that out with the vice grips, and it's as good as new. So, I got this fixed in place right away. These are stainless steel self-tapping screws, but even though they're self-tapping, you're gonna have to use a punch and pre-drill a hole. Otherwise, you're never gonna get through this stainless steel. It'll just go forever. In a short while, this is gonna go on here. This is high temperature silicone, and it's an elbow. I'll just clamp it onto here, and then I'll run my drain line over this way somewhere. I'm not sure if I'm gonna run it down the wall and through the baseboard, or if I'm gonna go right through the wall here. I'll probably run it down because it'll splash against the wall and I'll get a bunch of ice out there and it'll probably ruin the paint. Yeah, so this will go on here, it'll go over to here, it's gonna have a loop in it with water in it, and then it'll go all the way down to the grade board and through the grade board to the outside. All right, let's get outside, finish things up out there so I can get that ladder out of there. We're gonna have snow tomorrow, and I don't wanna leave that out in the snow. I think all I gotta do is tighten up some clamps and bring my level with me and level off that termination, but we'll see when we get out there. What a beautiful day. No wind to speak of, and the sun's out, everything's melting. Ah, look what happened. This fell off. It's doing just fine now, but looks like we're gonna be working in the weather here. Well, not weather, but the drip. Let's see what it looks like up on this roof. Uh, just a little bit of snow up there. Just enough to cause a little bit of misery. Alright, I'm not going to bend these tabs, I'm just going to put them on. I might bend them just a little bit so this doesn't fall off again, but it fell off because I was goofing around with it on the inside and this ring wasn't on at all. This water that's bouncing off of me is nice and warm from the black roof. So it's not really unpleasant. Ah, the bottom one isn't on. All right, let me get this done and I'll get back with you. All right, the bottom one is now on. Not sure how much of this is going to show, but I think you get the gist of it. I'm not bending these tabs all the way. I'm just bending it so it doesn't want to come off. When I slid this pipe through, I did not get my ring through there, so I got an extra ring out here. I used a hose clamp on the inside, so all is well. Get my level wet. Beautiful. All right, that's all it needs. And again, 
I do not think this thing is going to leak. The wall is going to be open like that for, I don't know, maybe a month or so. So I'm going to leave it just like this and see if I get any leaks. If not, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. But like I said, I can come and put a bead of silicone around this edge and be sure of it. So one way or another, it's not going to leak. I had to open the door here because it's warmer out here than it was in the shop. All right, let's take one final look from the ground. Ooh, got a little bit of a breeze here. Get out of the breeze. Yeah, that looks really nice. I'm glad I found that nearly matching color red for the boot. And it's really nice that it was the right size like that too so that it fit right between two of the ribs. Really nice looking. Okay. The next thing to do on this is to get the electrical from that box up there. I gotta run some BX down to here. I need to connect the thermostat. Then I need to connect the electrical temporarily with this wire right here. Connect my Romex to this old destroyed extension cord and then I'll run an extension cord all the way around to the entrance panel over there to get electricity and I'll wire up the thermostat temporarily. Just stick it right here on one of the studs. Then I can turn this thing on and test the pressure at the valve there. To do that, I'll be using my Yellow Jacket pressure gauge. Yellow Jacket is made in America, so if you're gonna get a pressure gauge, get a Yellow Jacket. So I'm gonna want 10 inches of water column on the outlet side and it's already set at 12 and a half inches at the regulator there on the inlet side. So I'll have to do any adjustment that's needed with the new adjuster that I put in here when I converted this to propane. This is where you hook up the manometer, the gas pressure tester. So once all those tests are done, I can close the side of this up and this will be done except for the permanent stuff, the permanent wiring and the hole in the wall and all that stuff. But for the most part, I'll be able to turn this on and use it once I'm done with that. So that will be in tomorrow's video. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.